Welcome to another edition of this fantastic and engaging show. Politicians affect every aspect of our lives, yet there's a growing sense of disenchantment with the political process. The scandals in the political world haven't helped, but the aim of this show is to try to address this engagement issue. And what we try to do is to give you an insight uh, into those that represent us in the Houses of Parliament, and also to ask them the questions that you are concerned about. Today is a very special show. We're covering the by-election uh, that's currently ongoing within the Feltham and Heston constituency in West London. Now this is of national importance because it will almost serve as a pulse check uh, to the performance of all of the national parties. We will be speaking to each of the three candidates from the respective parties and getting an insight into their backgrounds and also asking them the questions that count. We're here now with Boris Johnson, who's here supporting Mark Bowen, the Conservative candidate for the by-election in the Feltham and Heston constituency. Boris, what are your thoughts? I think Mark's a fantastic candidate, and the great thing about him is he's a local guy. I've been very struck just walking around with him uh, today, uh, up and down the, this shopping area, in and out the, the aisles of the Asda. How many people already know him and have been talking about their problems with him? I think he'll bring a great deal to, uh, to Feltham and Heston in Parliament and he'll work very, very hard. Absolutely, absolutely, Boris. And Boris, this, this by-election has a, a national significance. Um, what do you think the results are going to be? Well, I think it's, it's obviously it's too close to call and I, I, I wouldn't want to uh, predict the outcome right now, but you look at the polls in, in the country and I, I think it was the, the Tories were, and Labour were more or less neck and neck, so you, I, I really wouldn't, wouldn't care to, to prophesy, but I think Mark's got a fantastic chance, and he's a, an outstanding local candidate. I think, I'm right saying, are you the only guy who lives in the area? The only one who can win that lives in the constituency. The, oh, sorry, the only one that can win that lives in the constituency. There you go. Everybody at Saint Gat TV, Mark Bowen. <laughs> Sassery Cow. That's what it is. Sassery Cow. Thank you so much, Boris. Appreciate your time. We're here with the candidate, uh, for the Conservative candidate for the by-election in the Feltham and Heston constituency, that's Mark Bowen. Mark, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your life outside politics. Wahi Guruji Ka Khalsa, Wahi Guruji K Fati. Uh, I'm Mark. I live in this constituency. Um, I have lived in this constituency in Feltham, for, in Heston, for 13 years. Uh, as you can tell from one's uh, accent, I was born in the Principality in Wales. Um, many of my values are similar to many Sikh families who uh, were born and bred uh, around here. I live in the constituency with my wife and my three children, and at this by-election, I am the local candidate. I am the candidate who lives in this constituency, which matters to many people. So, so Mark, um, why, why should people vote for you? Partly because I am the local candidate and local representation truly does matter. In addition to that, I believe I, I'm, I'm standing on the platform that has the right policies for people, including Sikh members of the community. The most serious issue at the moment is the economy. And I give you the example of the, de the deficit. The government has said it wants to eliminate the deficit and then begin to attack Britain's debt problem. If I was to say to your listeners, I should max out my credit card and then let my three young children pay it off later on, I think many of your listeners would lose respect for me. The nation's finances are no different. So what I'm saying is the government is absolutely right. It's got to get, eliminate the deficit. We've got to live within our means and then we've got to attack this debt mountain because it's in the interests of our children to do so. So Mark, uh, a criticism that's often levelled at politicians is that they don't really talk about their flaws. So if I was to ask you, what are your weaknesses or what are the uh, aspects of your party or party policy that you would like to change? In terms of a personal flaw, um, my wife would, would agree I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a bit emotional at times. I, uh, I think it's a Libran trait. Uh, I, I, well, I get frustrated when I don't get results and, uh, and sometimes I can take things uh, personally and I've been told don't take things so personally. So I, I would call that a flaw. In terms of um, disagreeing with party policy, which I think is a very important question to ask of all politicians because none of us should be robots. Um, one local concern I have about um, this area is the growth of um, houses in, in multiple occupation because um, what I want is f uh, strong families and strong communities and I do wonder whether the configuration of housing in this area on the doorstep of Heathrow Airport is the right one. I'd also like to see um, 
my party go that little bit further on the devolution, the West Lothian question. I say this as a Welshman, but what we've got with the devolution project, we have Welsh and Scottish members of Parliament voting on English matters, whereas English constituency MPs cannot vote on matters in the Principality and in Scotland. That unfairness has not sufficiently been addressed yet. Sure. So, so Mark, engagement is always a key issue. If you were elected, how would you ensure that you would stay engaged with local people? Well, for one, I'd, I'll continue to live here uh, in the heart of the constituency with my wife and my uh, three children. I will stand on my record as a councillor. Um, when people come send me an email or call me up on the telephone or come to see me at a surgery, I respond. I don't always promise to deliver. What I do promise to do is engage and do my very, very best for people. So I intend to keep it real and to reintroduce surgeries so that people can make an appointment or there would be some drop-in surgeries as well. So people can come and see me and say, Mark, I've got this problem, can you assist? So that, that connect is very, very important. I'd also int intend to publish uh, a half-yearly report on my progress, both in Parliament and, more importantly, local, locally in the constituency. And, and, and Mark, what are your top two priorities? The top three priorities I would have is to provide outstanding local representation as the Member of Parliament. Okay. Secondly, to support the government in its plans to eliminate the deficit, because that matters so much for my children and ch other children in this, in this area. And one other thing that was raised um, to me at the previous general ele election when I was the candidate, from Sikh families and from other families also, was Labour's record on controlling immigration was a poor one. What a lot of Sikh families say to me is, my father came to this country from India or from Kenya and has made a valued contribution. Immigration is good, but we think it should be controlled. And that's, that's one of my priorities also. Sure, sure. And, and if we were to, to, to move on to, to the issue of unemployment, so nationally unemployment is at over 2.3 million. Um, youth unemployment, so those between the ages of 16 to 24 unemployed, is, is over a million. Uh, locally, we've seen a rise of 147% uh, in youth unemployment from the month of January till now. What would you do to address this issue? Well, firstly, I would dispute the figures. Um, I'm a project manager by trade, and we, we refer to something called baselining. So when you compare something from one period to another, you are comparing apples with apples. This 147% statistic uh, I don't think is a credible one, because you can move young people from this scheme to that scheme and keep them out of the, the headline figures. That's not credible. So what we've got now is some credibility and baselining. In my opinion, one young unemployed person is one too many. The problem is not a new one, though it's a serious one. What the government is doing is really promoting um, apprenticeships, and there are some very big success stories there. And getting the balance right between addre addressing a problem and being positive, I would stress to young people, we are on the doorstep of two hubs, both Heathrow and Central London. There are many, many opportunities here. So what I want to see is young people be ambitious and, um, and want to live here and prosper here as well. But I think the government is making a good start in dealing in terms of dealing with the problem. OK, so I, I think you've touched on a very interesting point, and that's Heathrow. And Heathrow is, 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 is without doubt a major local employer, uh, both in terms of the service industry and, and, and blue collar work, and, and definitely one of those stimulators uh, for helping to employ young people locally. Now, the third runway is something that they've asked for, so the British Air Force Authority have asked for uh, time and time again, and they feel that this could help to, uh, help to hold them in good stead. How do you feel about the third runway? Um, my position was no different to, the, um, in, in, to Alan Keane's position, um, who unfortunately passed away, which is why we have this by-election. I agonised over this issue on, on, a, on a personal level. I work for one of the airlines. Um, I believe in Heathrow. Heathrow is crucial. There, are st there were strong economic arguments in favour of runway expansion. However, I, on balance and, and with reluctance, I, I took the view that the environmental impact and the externalities marginally outweighed the economic benefits. And that's why I reluctantly decided to support the Conservative Party policy of opposing a third runway. And, and if we were to move on to, on to something which is dear to a lot of people's hearts, and that's uh, crime and the perception of crime. Now, again, some, some figures that have been touted locally are that uh, there's been a, a third uh, uh, rise in terms of knife crime locally in the London Borough of Hounslow uh, over the last year, while actually in neighbouring boroughs such as Kingston, there's been a 14% decrease, uh, and in Richmond, it's around uh, just under 5% uh, decrease in, in, in knife crime. Um, how would you tackle this issue locally? 
This is one of the issues we have campaigned on. What the party, what the party is saying, we're going to get tough, no messing, zero tolerance when it comes to knife crime. And uh, one of the pieces of literature we've delivered um, during this campaign was to explain to people, if you are caught, if you are found guilty of carrying a knife. Um, and you, it's demonstrated you have some dishonourable um, intentions uh, when carrying a knife. It's two strikes and you're out. There will be, there, you will be in trouble. So the message is clear. Um, with the Conservative government, we are going to get very, very tough, even tougher than we already are, on knife crime, because I do share local concern about the problem. Sure, sure. Well, thank you so much, Mark. And Mark, you've got uh, the Right Honourable Paul Upple with you. Paul, I believe you're the uh, Member of Parliament for Wolverhampton South West. That's um, right. You're here today with Mark. Any, any words, any thoughts you'd like to share with us? Well, first of all, Sastrigal Budgie. I mean, I've been out with Mark for the last few weeks now. He speaks some quite dungy Punjabi as well, which I've been particularly impressed with. He's a local man out in the constituency. And what I would say is be a strong voice for Feltham and Hestman. I think that's very, very important in Parliament. And I can see that he's actually got the essential ingredients to go and be a marvellous member of Parliament, actually represent this constituency in the way that I think it needs to be represented. Hi there, we've got with us Yvette Cooper, uh, the Shadow Home Secretary. Yvette, you're here to support Seema Malhotra, the Labour candidate. What are your thoughts? Well, we've been talking to parents outside the school this afternoon, and it's great. They're getting a great response, and it also the really good thing is a lot of people know Seema already, you know, because she's got such strong local roots, because she's been talking to people on the doorstep around the area. So a lot of the parents have already said, yes, we know Seema already, and uh, yes, we're supporting her this week. And, and Yvette, just to, just to kind of uh, follow on now, um, the by-election, of course, uh, some have said is, is, has a national significance because it's almost a pulse check on the performance of political parties. How do you think your candidate will do? Well, I think we've got such a fantastic candidate with Seema. I think the, the things that the Labour Party is campaigning on, jobs, uh, growth, we really need more jobs for this area. Uh, we nearly, really need to support the economy. And I'm really worried about what the government is doing. They're cutting too far, too fast. And that is hitting services as well as jobs in this area. So I think we've got a strong message for the Labour Party, but also a brilliant candidate uh, in Seema too. We're here with Simon Holtra, the Labour candidate for the upcoming by-election in the Feltham and Heston constituency. Uh, Seema, first of all, tell me a little bit about yourself and your life outside politics. Hanji, such a card first. Um, I, I just want to say that I, you know, I've grown up in Hounslow, I went to school in Heston, you know, this is a place that's my home. This is a place where I started out. I actually first uh, had my first job at uh, Woolworths on Hounslow High Street as well. And, um, and then after that, after university, I had a career in business in the private sector working and then with PricewaterhouseCoopers so I've had quite a, you know quite a different you know kind of diverse experience working with government departments working with business working with industry um, and also doing a lot of voluntary work um, one of the other things I've done is I set up a women's network to support women coming forward in public life and, po and politics and also ran a project to increase diversity ethnic minorities also on our public board so that we all all our communities are playing a real role in our public life in Britain. Sure, sure. Okay, so, so why should local constituents vote for you? The first thing I would say is that I grew up here and I've known Hounslow. I've been in Hounslow almost all my life. My parents are here. This is a place that is home, that always will be home. What's really important to me and what I think is really important to people is that politicians are close to the community, that they understand the community, they're committed to the community. So I think when you make a choice in politics, you say, you know, who, who represent, who's going to represent me? Who's going to represent me with their heart as well as their mind? You know, so, and someone who's got experience in business as well as with government, you bring a lot of skills into political life. You have huge respect for the community. I, you know, there are many reasons why um, I would encourage people to look closely and make you know make that decision for Labour on Thursday. Sure, sure. So, so people often criticise politicians for not being open about their flaws. Now if I was to ask you about your weaknesses or aspects of party policy that you would advocate changing, what would you say? I think the biggest thing that we've got to look at in, in politics, um, it, it really is about representation and representation of all communities. 
And for me, being an ethnic minority, I'm the only Asian ethnic minority on the ballot paper as well. I'm the only woman on the ballot paper out of nine candidates. For me, that's absolutely vital because I honestly think that you get better decisions in public life and in political life if you've brought the voices of others with you. And so for me, I don't think, or I don't think the parties have worked hard enough on that. We've made you know, greater progress at a local level than we have in Westminster. I think that's a really big thing we've got to change. And for me, playing my part to make that happen you know, is really important. And engagement is always a key issue. How uh, will you ensure, if you're elected, that you'll continue to be engaged with local people? Well, firstly, I think you, you've got to be in the community and part of the community, as I have been for so long. That means being at the Gudwaras, being at the Mandar, being with the mosque. It means being in the at community events. It means when you have surgeries, you have them in your office, but you have them out in the constituency. You are meeting people on their doorstep, as we have been. You know, this is part of the political life that I have known for over 20 years since I was at the school in, in, in Hounslow when I joined the Labour Party. I, I honestly think that's part of what a politician has to do. I want to be accessible, I will be accessible, and I will be part of the community. So Seema, what will be your top two priorities if you're elected? The two top priorities I would say that we've really heard talking to so many people, Asian families, you know, other, you know, kind of, you know, English families, all the communities that we have in our diverse, you know, Somalian families, the, the, this community that is so rich in Hounslow, as well as businesses. The two things we have heard so strongly is that people want support to come through the downturn, help reduce the cost of living, help with, you know, young, young people staying on at college, help with tuition fees, you know, and, and reducing tuition fees. We never wanted to see that treble, you know, we fought against that you know these are the things that people want make our lives easier help us get on in life and reduce the cost at this time the second area that people have really raised is crime and antisocial behavior we want our streets to be safe there's a risk that goes up when people are you know suffering in the downturn we want our streets to be safe for ourselves for our children so uh, you know and, and making sure we've got the policing we need is absolutely vital just want to explore those those issues a little bit further with you. So I'm going to throw some statistics at you. So currently, unemployment sitting at around 2.3 million nationally. Uh, something like a million young people are out of work. And locally in the London Borough of Hounslow, uh, something like uh, uh, there's been a 147% rise in unemployment and youth unemployment specifically. What would you do to address this issue? That, that is also about Feltham and Heston specifically, because Feltham and Heston is, is, is a, is a, has got bigger issues than, than, than other parts of Hounslow as well, and other parts of London. The, the one, of, one of the most important things that I've, I've, you know, when I've been at the skill centre, Feltham Skill Centre, when I've been at the schools, when I've been talking to business, one of the most important things is creating opportunities for people locally, and also making sure that we match the opportunities there are with the skills that people need. So for me, one of the first things is going to be getting together the right form forums of business, of local employers, you know, the airport, public sector, and saying how can we create more apprenticeships, more opportunities, how can we link better with the skills centre, with our schools, so that young people also have the mentoring they need. From a very early age they've got access to very good advice as well, you know, and make sure that they know that when they want to take their next steps, there's a, you know, there's a whole community behind them doing that. Um, Heathrow is a great uh, local employer uh, and a great stimulator in the local economy. Now, how do you feel about the third runway? The third runway is something that a lot of people here were, um, were, were, were really worried about in the sense that it's got great environmental impacts. You know, we're going to see lots of homes lost, you know, big impacts on noise and pollution. The big issue that we're all really focused on now, and this is cross-party, is how we keep Heathrow competitive and how we make sure we have a national aviation strategy that really is saying we're putting Heathrow also at the heart of that, keeping the jobs locally, expanding jobs locally. But the other thing, really making sure we focus on as the planes go over, um, is making sure that Heathrow's a good neighbour. You know, I grew up under the flight path. I lived many of my childhood years in Bedfont as well. We were just one mile from the airport. We knew noise and we knew what it was like under that flight path. You know, people need to also sleep at night. So all of those issues, are some of the issues I'd be focused on straight away if I was to be elected to Parliament. And a, and a final question, um, you know, loads of people have, have raised concerns locally about knife crime. Um, there has been a 33% a rise in youth-related knife crime in the London Borough of Hounslow over the last year, while at the same time there's been a drop in nearby boroughs such as Kingston and Richmond. Uh, what would you do to address this? 
Well, these issues are so complicated. What I would say, firstly, is we've got to tackle, you know, the, 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 the self-esteem issues that affect young people and why they feel sometimes, you know, need to go into gangs, you know, and, the, and those things that we know are affecting a number of the boroughs, a lot of boroughs in London. And so working with um, the police, working with councillors, working, you know, working with all parts of the community, we've got to turn around the lives of young people, working with them so that they've got alternatives. And there's good work going on in Hauso and other boroughs to make that happen. The first thing I, you know, I, I want to say on this as well is that we've got to be ambitious for our young people's lives. And if they know there's a message from hope, of hope coming to them, they'll be less likely to turn you know, to crime. And also in these time of downturn, when they think there's less available to them, that we say actually there is a future available to you. It's there if you want it and we'll support you going for it. Seema Mohotra, thank you so much. Thank you, Sashika. We're here today with the candidate for the Liberal Democrat Party for the upcoming by-election in the Feltham and Heston constituency, Roger Crouch. Roger, tell me a little bit about your uh, life outside the world of politics. Um, beyond politics, I'm a high street solicitor, um, so I'm not a career politician. I deal with uh, cases um, concerning mental capacity, it tends to be elderly clients who've got dementia. Um, I grew up on the south coast, failed my 11 plus, but managed to get to Oxford University, so I'm very keen to encourage others to get, get to university and um, have those education opportunities I had. Okay. So, so Roger, why should the constituents of Feltham and Heston vote for you? Um, I think the Liberal Democrats are offering a very positive message to uh, constituents in Feltham and Heston. Um, Labour have taken the seat for granted. Um, the Conservatives have admitted they cannot win the seat. And what I am emphasising is that we're playing a positive part in the coalition government, acting in the national interest. And our main priority, particularly in this area, is to s safeguard jobs, particularly for youngsters. Um, I was visiting a local business the other week um, on Friday with Vince Cable, the business secretary, um, a business that's expanding, taking on new employees in this area. And our top priority in government is to um, create jobs for particularly youngsters. Okay. So, so, so Roger, uh, a criticism that's often levelled at politicians is that they don't really talk about their flaws. Now, if I was to ask you, what are your weaknesses and what aspects of your party policy or your party would you advocate changing? Um, my by-election team would say I need to open my eyes when they take photographs of me. Um, in terms of uh, the Liberal Democrats, I think we just need to be a, mo a lot more clearer you know, with some of our policies. Um, pupil premium um, is bringing money to schools in this area, 3.4 million, but the phrase pupil premium is um, often misunderstood. And we should explain it as extra, f extra money for kids. And and, and if we were to, to talk a little bit about engagement, and that's always key, um, you know, constituents will always ask, well, how engaging is our, is our local MP? Mm. Now, if you were to be elected, how would you ensure that you do stay engaged? Um, well, during this election campaign, I've been trying to have lots of conversations. It's a very short campaign, so it's very difficult to speak to everyone. But after the election, if I'm elected, and even if I'm not elected, I will want to carry on having those conversations, listening to local residents, dealing with their concerns, and actually working with them to um, resolve those issues. And I, I would pledge to have a weekly surgery. Anyone could turn up and talk to me and um, discuss their issues, very much like uh, Vince Cable does as a Liberal Democrat MP. Despite Despite his role in government, um, actually the constituency is really important and we must never take it for granted. And are you based in the constituency? I, I just live over the boundary in Twickenham, so five minutes cycle ride and I'm there in Feltham Town Centre and uh, with, with the constituency. Okay, fantastic. Well, okay, so, so could you explore for us um, your top two priorities if you were elected? Um, my top priority is jobs, um, talking to local residents particularly at uh, this time of the year, they're very concerned about their job security and income security. And I would want to work in Parliament and with our ministers in the coalition government to ensure that the jobs are created in this area and safeguarded. And we, we have a good record already. We, um, as part of the coalition government, the apprenticeship scheme has brought 730 additional apprenticeships to this area and there's various other schemes that are being introduced to enable businesses to take on work experience um, placements and really make sure there's jobs for, for youngsters, that's my top priority. Um, my second priority is to make sure that the safer neighbourhood teams are safeguarded. Um, I know knife crime is an issue, there's sadly been two very um, distressing incidents since recently in Hounslow Town Centre in Cranford. And 
in various parts of London, the safer neighbourhood teams are under threat. Um, the, the Conservative Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, can release funding to make sure those safer neighbourhood teams are safeguarded. I'm very concerned that crime is on the increase in this area. Okay, well, well let's, um, let's explore those issues a little bit further. So, so unemployment um, has hit over 2.3 million. Uh, youth unemployment, so those uh, between the ages of 16 and 24 that don't currently have a job, yeah. um, it's, it's uh, over a million. Yeah. And unfortunately, there are, there are some statistics locally that, that don't seem to, to fare any better. Mm. Um, it's, there's, you know, there, 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 is, um, there is a case to say that over our, uh, youth unemployment has risen to 147% uh, over the course of this year. Now, what would you do to address that issue? Well, it's a top priority of Liberal Democrats in government and we don't want to have a lost generation. At the beginning of this campaign I was very lucky to meet with the Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg. Um, he was able to tell me about the £1 billion youth contract and as I said earlier that's the apprenticeships in this area, 730 additional apprenticeships, additional money for smaller businesses to take on um, youngsters and those who've been on, on, the, on the unemployment register for over three months will now have the opportunity to have a work placement or work experience. And as, as I said earlier, we also want to encourage the entrepreneurs in this constituency so that they can grow. I'm very concerned that some of the parties in this election have very dangerous and reckless policies. We must remain positive players in Europe. 3.5 million jobs in this country, that's one in ten, depend on us being part of the single market and having access to that large, w worth trillions of, of pounds single market. Okay, so, so, so Roger, locally uh, Heathrow Airport is, is, is probably the most important uh, employer yeah. uh, and it's um, it's, it, there is a desire to build a third runway, they, you know, they've been harping on about it for a very long time. Where do you stand on that issue? I, I'm quite lucky. My, my grandfather was a pilot and my um, father was an air traffic controller, so I kind of have, an, have a history of aviation in my family. Um, I recognise the importance of Heathrow. Um, about a quarter of the population in this constituency depend on their livelihood um, at Heathrow, and it is in incumbent upon the Member of Parliament for this area to make sure that Heathrow remains the international centre for aviation in Europe. Having said that, I think it was right that the coalition government scrapped the third runway plans. We also have to recognise that local residents do have to um, live alongside the airport and have to deal with the pollution and noise. So it's a very delicate balancing act. Um, the additional thing I would like to do, the government have an aviation policy review in place and I want to ensure and lobby our ministers in the Department for Transport for, for the reinstitution of the Cranford Agreement. Sure. And I think you touched on a very important point earlier on, and that was around knife crime. So, so recent statistics suggest that a knife crime, uh, youth knife crime, has gone up by a third across the London borough of Hounslow. Uh, mm. This is while knife crime in, in your uh, borough uh, mm. of the London borough of Richmond and also in the London borough of Kingston has gone down. Yeah. Now, how would you address that if elected? It's, it's a very distressing statistic. Um, as I said earlier, I would want to make sure that the safer neighbourhood teams are protected. There should be additional funding for those areas where knife crime is an issue. I'm also concerned that Labour-controlled Hounslow Council, um, whilst there's no direct connection, ha have cut back on youth services and we must provide a different route, route forward in the future. Um, crime should not be tolerated. Um, we have to work together as a community and provide alternatives to crime um, for youngsters. I've listened to many um, local residents who are really concerned about antisocial behaviour and we don't want that then manifesting itself in more serious crimes. Boris Johnson, Paul Opel, Yvette Cooper, what a fantastic show. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, a final message uh, to our sponsor, uh, Five Star Estates, a local business that were kind enough not only to support us with teas and coffees but also the use of their offices. And now I suppose there's only one thing left to say, let the democratic process take its course. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.